This video will discuss utilization in more detail for Kingman's equation. We expect that you know what utilization is. If not, please view the video that explains the basics of utilization. In this video, we specifically look at the effects of utilization on the work in progress and the waiting time. Utilization is one of the three parameters in Kingman's equation. This states that the waiting time before a machine or a job is the product of the job time and the effect of the utilization and the effect of variation. In this video, we focus on the effects of utilization. What we state in this video is practice oriented. We will state some formulas that specify the utilization further that are seen in production. Okay, let's look at this production system with a job and before the job a queue. We are specifically interested in the utilization of the job and we saw in the previous video that the utilization is what you really do divided by what you can do. But what you really have to do is not constant, like in an ideal world. Although you can have an average input, the input varies in time. Sometimes you have some delays in supply or sometimes a large batch arrives. And if you think about the time it takes to do a job or the capacity of a process, this can vary too. Sometimes you have to do more work on a job and sometimes it goes a little quicker than planned. Or you have a smaller and larger batches to process or you need more time to set up and chase a tool. These two variations have an effect on the possible utilization. What are these effects? Suppose you have no variation and the throughput matches the capacity of the job. We have almost 100% utilization. You see, the flow of the orders is without any delays. But suppose the input does have variation and the input does not arrive at regular intervals, although on average the input is the same. The time it takes to do the job is regular like the first example. In this example, you cannot make up for the lost time that an input is not available. Because we tried to have 100% utilization. And if orders arrive a bit quicker, you cannot handle them in time. You see a queue appears and the products have to wait before being processed. If the input is stable, but the job time varies, you see the same effect. You cannot make up for the lost time of a process that takes a little longer. And if you are quicker, there is not always a product waiting to be processed. The central issue is you cannot make up for lost time if input and job times vary. The larger the variation in time, the input or throughput arrives and variation in the job time, the longer the waiting times in the queue for individual orders. This effect is worse for a high utilization than for a process with a low utilization. Because with a low utilization, you have some slack to deal with the unexpected variation. Used differently too. If you know that job times vary, and you know that the input is variable, you have to decrease the utilization to keep the waiting times low and to reduce the work in progress. Lots of measurements were done on utilization and the queue. And from these measurements, there is a relation between these two deducted. This relationship of this effect on the queue is shown in the following figure. We see a relationship that can be described by the formula u divided by one minus u. So the utilization divided by one minus the utilization. If a machine is planned for half its capacity, so the planned utilization is one half or 50%, the effect is neutral. You can calculate the length of the queue and use the job time as it is. If the utilization is 10%, the factor is one ninth. Variation is effectively dampened out or make little difference. If the utilization rises, the length of the queue will be longer and longer and longer. Suppose you have a planned utilization of 90%. The queue will be nine times as large as expected. Because of variation, the queue and waiting times are massively amplified. 
and if you have a utilization near 100%, the queue will be so large that the waiting times for an average order is almost infinite. We see this in production situations regularly. Fully planned production systems that are clogged with work in progress, stock everywhere and no one knows how to get the production to flow again. Rajan Suri, the founder of the Quick Response Manufacturing Theory, called this relation between utilization and queue or waiting time that can be seen the magnifying effect. So, we can fill this in by u divided by 1 minus u in Kingman's equation. This is not the end of the story, because this is valid for one single process or one single server. But what happens if we have parallel servers? If more processes work simultaneously, a longer processing time on one machine does not automatically mean that all work will be delayed and that orders need to wait in the queue because this can be dealt with by the other processes. You see here in the bottom process that it takes a long time to finish a job, but the incoming jobs can be handled by the other two. So the effects of a high utilization will be reduced. Based on observations in working situation, we see that this reduction is approximately the utilization raised to the power of the square root of two times the number of servers plus one, and this minus one. This makes the following magnifying effect for multiple servers. To see the effect, we put some differences in this table for two servers. It reduces the magnifying effect by more than half for utilization of 90%. So, two machines with a certain capacity can handle more products than one machine of the double capacity. And you can reduce the waiting time of an order immensely by adding a machine or a server. This concludes the effect of utilization in Kingman's equation. We took variation on the utilization into account and the effect of more machines or servers to calculate an approximation of the waiting time before a process. In the next video, we explain a little more about the effects of variation, although some has already been covered in this explanation.